Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Slow Your Roll. I'm Alex. I'm Cody. Today, we're going to be talking about travel. One of the main pillars of gameplay, there's combat, social, and exploration, and we're going to be stamping all over that third one today. Today, we're actually going to be talking about the test travel system, and we didn't come up with this by a long shot. We actually seen an amazing video detailing this, and we just had to present it to you guys. 100%. So this video will be referencing very largely, and this is like almost a reaction, really, to a Pointy Hat's video about travel in D&D and other TTRPGs. Okay. But yeah, he made a system that he calls TES, the Test Travel System, which is basically the travel event system. Makes sense. Also, if we have not said it enough yet, you should totally check out that video. Yeah, it's really good. It's really helpful. It was a nice find. Basically, the first portion of his video kind of just goes into detail about the frustrations of trying to find and run a travel system that makes sense in D&D. Many GMs struggle to find a travel system that works and is fun and is intuitive that the players don't feel like is a slog the whole time. And the biggest issue with this is a lot of times things will just recommend random roll tables for encounters in specific areas of the map. But a lot of GMs might not realize quickly that this just becomes meaningless play if you don't do it carefully. I mean, imagine if a player character dies in an event that is a randomly generated event and everyone at the table knows that it is and can feel that it is. Then the character dies almost meaninglessly. It didn't add to the story in any interesting way. And just that whole system just doesn't feel good, let alone finding the role tables that you like and make sense at the table for the environments you're in and all that. Yep, because uh, the one thing about randomness, it's random. Exactly. And just a little bit later in the video, they start talking about how they implement this travel system. And I just got to say, this is genius. First off, most things really shouldn't be random because your world probably isn't random either. There are deliberate things happening deliberately. And before we even talk about how we go about the events, how are we getting to the events? Travel. There will be short, far, and very far distances. You can have one, two, or three encounters for these specific increments. And it helps to narratively get to where you're going without having to roleplay travel for a week. Yes, and as mentioned, there will be events still that happen. So close is one, far might be two, very far might be three, like Alex said. These events, he color-coded in his description of how he ran them. And they work exactly like you might expect. The three pillars of the game. There's red, <laughs> that is a combat event. This works like you'd expect, one way or another. The players have to fight something. There's a yellow, which is a, an exploration event. This could be the rickety rope bridge, a crumbling cliff, things that often introduce skill challenges or something interesting like that. But really, this is just the time that the GM can seriously flex all of their describing muscles, as Pointy Hat calls it. I am going to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You're good. <laughs> I didn't know how else to announce it. I love that. I am sneezing. <laughs> All right. All right. Good. So I got the yellow events done. All right. <laughs> You're good. You're good. <clears throat> yeah. All right. You good? <laughs> yep. All good. All right. <clears throat> and then lastly, you've got blue events. These are the role play events that might happen during traveling. This is a spot of huge possibility for intense drama. This could be someone from a player's backstory introduced in this way very specifically, like their long lost sister or something like that. Or it could just be past NPCs from the campaign already, or even ones you watch introduced in the future, sprinkle them in now. Could even be something as wild as the BBDG himself taking a rest somewhere, as Pointy Hat mentioned. But generally, these are the events you want to focus on to like weave together in traveling to make some sense of it. Absolutely. When you get the grasp of these kind of events and how your players are going to go about them, you can start combining different events. What if you put a yellow event and a red event together? So now it's a serene environment that you're describing. It could even be a skill challenge to get across something that's dangerous. But now the combat encounter starts. Or what if you wanted to mix up some other things, like a roleplay and a combat, and then that's a purple encounter. And I'm sure you guys pretty much know the color theory too, but mixing matching any of these becomes pretty cool and leaves your players guessing. They're not just a combat encounter anymore, it's we have to save the princess in the middle of the bandit encampment. And honestly, there's so many different types of examples that you could come up with for these different types of events. 
But specifically, let's look at something that should work out at your table. Yes, so we've cooked up a scenario <laughs> that might give you a working example of how this works. And truthfully, Pointy Hat did in his video too, at about like 20 minutes in, and it's really good. So you should check it out. Obviously, your party has to travel from wherever they are, and let's say they're just going to some big city. But the truth is, this traveling distance is very far, so they're going to encounter roughly three events. And of course, that number can change if you feel like your players seem to be viewing this as more of a slog, then just skip it. Do maybe one event and just skip through it. Do what your players want to do. Let's say you do stick with the three events. We'll say that the first event, as your players are venturing forth, maybe they have a night of rest peacefully, but the first thing that happens is they find an inn. And in this inn, they describe a common patron named Ilara, and she's an herbalist. But the fact is, she hasn't been in in quite some time. And maybe just leave it at that. There's not really, no one really talks to Ilara. We don't know much about her. She's a loner. But this would be a typical blue event where the players can just hang out at an inn for a second. Get their bearings before they continue traveling on. Yeah, and... There's a whole bunch of people at that inn that probably know where the players are going or coming from, talking points aplenty. And when your players finally leave that quaint little inn, they find themselves up to a cavern. A rickety rope bridge going across it, but it's a great time to start describing the environment, the cliff face, the bridge, the trees across, everything that the players might be able to interact with. But eventually, they come to this rickety rope bridge that might be pretty hard to cross. Could have a skill challenge in there for you, but when they get to this rope bridge somebody is hanging down in the middle of it and that's alara herself and she was beaten and bloodied by a terrible group of bandits but as your players hopefully rescue alara she'll give you maybe some details the bandits she overheard them say that they're heading to a big city of course the big city that the players are headed to and you'll notice through all of these events that they're seamlessly being weaved together by the red story thread a little bit even if it isn't the main story mm -hmm. which will take us directly to the third event of this very far travel the red event or the combat event basically you're going to describe to your players that they arrive they arrive at the city just as they had hoped relatively unscathed at this point maybe but just before they get to the front gates they are ambushed by a group of bandits and oddly enough the bandit leader sure looks a lot like the one that alara described to you maybe alara was actually able to give the players a bit of a idea of the weakness of this leader maybe he has a very specific he he's got all black teeth from the sweets so you just gotta punch him in the mouth Exactly. So he's got a weak mouth. You aim for his mouth and you're dropping him in one hit. <laughs> but it really could be anything like this. The concept is that all events are weaved together seamlessly in a way that makes sense and isn't just random. And in fact, maybe by the time your players finally dispatch this group of bandits, because let's be real, they're not losing to bandits, the city starts to storm in with a group of guards and it's, ah, wait a minute. Thanks for doing my job. <laughs> Might be able to walk in with a good reputation of the city that you were going to and even have a couple of people with an inn to the king or maybe the guard's post. So it's a really good way to even just introduce the places that you're about to go to because things are connected. It's likely that city would have been aware of these bandits and might have done something about it. And it just goes to show that the world is moving without your players, but they are affecting the world around them. One more thing that I thought about, conceptually, as you're weaving this random travel situation all the way through that isn't actually so random, mm -hmm. you could even view it as a dungeon. When you want to make your dungeons something that makes sense, you make them kind of seamless. Each room might make sense with what the main plot of the dungeon or theme of the dungeon is you just stretch this out to fit through a travel encounters instead of an actual cramped dungeon but this whole concept isn't necessarily revolutionary like it's not really that many new ideas it's just a reframing and kind of perspective check to realize why travel matters and to not get caught in the slog of the common issues that happen with travel encounters and things like that. Exactly. If you wanted to be really reductive, you could just say, don't be random. And then that's the video. But to be able to break it down into little parts and just really put them under the microscope helps a bunch. And I really enjoyed making a video like this. Travel and exploration is one of the forgotten pillars of play and it's one of my favorites. And of course we want to thank everybody for watching this video and if you haven't checked out the pointy hat video there's going to be a description somewhere over here. But other than that guys, I've been Alex with Slow Your Roll. And Cody over here. And we'll see you all later. See ya.